Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday morning, the 29th of July, 2023. Mark is continuing to read in the book, The Doctrine of Election by Arthur Pink, Chapter 4. He's in the fourth part of Chapter 4. If you're interested in obtaining a copy of this book, you can go to greatchristianbooks.com and get yourself a copy of this book. Chapter 4, Doctrine and Election, Part 4. Preachers may grade all the pleas about man and great powers. Freedom of his will and his capacity for good. Yet it is useless and madness to ignore the strong fact of the fall. The difference and disadvantage between our case and that of the fallen Adam's can scarcely be conceived. Instead of a perfect holiness, possessing and claim our minds and wills as, as it did his. There is no such vital principle left in our hearts. Instead, there is a thorough disability into what is spiritual and holy, yea, contrary entity and opposition thereto. Men err not knowing the power of original sin or the death of corruption that is in their own hearts. The little man now is the prime and proper seed of sin, the throne thereof is the seed therein. Thomas Goodwin, uh, word health and age are of no account, for nothing short of the new creation is of any avail. No matter what instruction fallen men receive, what inducements be offered them, Ethiopia cannot change his skin. Neither light conviction nor the general operation of the Holy Spirit are of any avail. Must God, over and above them, impart a new principle of wholeness to the heart? This has been clearly and fully demonstrated both under law and gospel. Read Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5 and see the wonders and awe inspiring manifestation of Himself which God granted to Israel to Sinai. Did that change your hearts and find their wills to obey Him? Then read through the four gospels. Holy Son of God. Truly, in the midst of men, not as a judge, but as a benefactor, going about doing good, being the hungry, healing the sick, proclaiming the gospel, did that know their hearts and win them to God. Know they hated and crucified him. Behold, then, the case of fallen mankind, alienated from the life of God, dead and trespassing. With no heart, no will for spiritual things in themselves. Their case is desperate, irretrievable, hopeless, apart from the divine election. None would, none could, would be saved. Election means that God was pleased to serve a remnant so that the entire race of man should not entirely perish. What thanks does he receive for this? None at all, save from those who have their. Then blinded eyes to open to receive and press for, express the blessedness of such a fact. Thanks, no, instead of the vast majority, even of those professing Christian, when they hear of this truth, ignorant of their own interest and the ways of God, plural of his election, vile him to the same, charge him with gross and just excuse him of being a merciless tyrant. Now the great God stands in no need of innocence from us in time. He will patiently close the mouth of the rebel. We must address a few more remarks to those who believe so disturbed by the scriptures to put so loud that God is guilty and justice when he's sovereign we elect some. First then we ask those slanders and Jehovah's and to make good their charge. The burden of proof falls upon them to do so. They affirm that in electing 
God's and just and let them demonstrate how such be the case. They cannot, in order to do so, they must show that lawbreakers merit something good at the hands of the lawgiver. They must show that the key and king is morally obliged to smile upon those who have blasphemed his name, desecrated his Sabbath, despite his word, reviled his servants, and above all, despised and rejected his son. If there is, if there is, is there one man in the whole world who would have been fortunate to say that he, that he merits anything of his maker? So be it known unto you that he shall have all he merits. His reward will be the flames of hell forever for that is the utmost. Any man ever married of God, God is no debt to man. The last great day every man shall have as much love, as much pity, as much goodness as he deserves. Even the lost in hell shall have all they deserve. A and more worth the day for them which when they shall have the wrath of God, which will be the sum of their deservings. God gives every man as much as he merits. If he therefore be accused and injustice and says he gives to more infinitely more than they merit C.H. Burson. How many who now speak with him and he has blessed his blood this way converted him as the love of Spurgeon. The master chief and execrate him for they to hear the faithful and plain spoken preaching. Second, we would inform these detractors of God that his salvation is not a matter of justice but of pure grace and grace is something that can claimed by none. Where is injustice if anyone does as he wills with his own? If I am free to disperse my charity and see his from God, he can see the less freedom bestow his gifts upon him he pleases. God is indebted to none, and therefore if he grants his favors in a sovereign way, he can complain. God passes thee by, he is not injured thee, but if he enriches thee, then art thou indebted to his grace, and then wilt thou cease praying about his justice and justice. We will gladly show with those who astonish and explain. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, or reward us according to our iniquities, Psalms, on three, ten. Salvation is God's free gift, and therefore He bestows on Him He pleases. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Well, we will continue this tomorrow. Well, actually, it will be Monday. We'll continue it. Uh, hope you have a good weekend and a good Lord's Day tomorrow. God bless.